The so, Southern State C coronavirus cases surging. 13 examples of people doing ordinary things before and being approached and eventually killed by police. This is too much. Just become a seeker. What's a seeker? Let's see. Let's make it interesting. Here's your first clue. See if you can't burn any of that energy off when you're out there. Well, off to the bathroom you go. I'm fluffy, puffy, and soft. I remind you of clouds in the air, but at the using to me, your legs are bare. You never stop praying. First Thessalonians 5:17. I have to do this? Yes, sir, you do. Have fun. Bye bye. Off to the bathroom you go. I'm fluffy, puffy, and soft. I remind you of clouds in the air, but after using me, your legs are bare. Never stop praying. First Thessalonians 5 17. <clears throat> In the kitchen is where I'll be if you're ready for something new, step by step I'll take you. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every, every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. I think I know where it is. New step by step, I'll take you. Hmm. Oh, I know. Got it. Hey, Dad. I got the cookbook. There's two quotes from two Bible verses, and they still don't make any sense. What does this have to do with my feelings? <laughs> Guess what? You have another clue! <laughs> A third clue, and here it is. I add flavor to everything I touch, savory or sweet, fruit or meat. To some, I am a treat. Then the way you live will always honor, please, and please the Lord. And you, your lives will produce every kind of good fruit all the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Colossians 1.10 I have to do this? Yes, sir, you do. This is another joke. Do I, am I laughing? Have fun. I add flavor to everything I touch, savory or sweet. I got it. Salt! I found the salt using, the script, using scripture. I still don't know what, what they mean or how they apply. Can you please tell me now? Well, no I can't. But you can continue to seek and find out more about them. I'll tell you what, let's sit here and watch Youth Church again and see what we can learn. Good morning, Lake Providence youth, family, and friends. This is Miss Regina, and I am so excited about what God is doing through this ministry. Today, as you begin to think about things you look for, you might look in a 
walker, you might look under your bed, you might look in the car, but Miss Virginia wants you to remember that as you're looking for things, you have become a seeker. And Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if we will seek God with our whole heart, then we will find him. So today, come join us. We need for you to be a seeker. God bless. I'll be reading Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and who, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prosper, not so the wicked, they all like chaff, they, that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assemb assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. I read Psalms 1. Please bow your head as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here today to bless those who are listening, that they benefit from these prayers and they understand that's going all that's going on in the earth right now. And Heavenly Father, I pray that all the people that understand what we're talking about, they will have something and they will put their input on it and everyone will learn about it. And Lord, I hope that everyone at home is doing okay and they will they will all be all right. Amen.
Hey, well, good morning, Youth Church, and good morning to all of my Lake Providence family. I'm really excited to join you again today on this edition of Youth Church Online. Uh, I have the pleasure today of being able to bring a message, and today we're going to talk about being a seeker for God. It's so important nowadays to know, how do we stay close to God? There's a lot of noise going on in the world right now, and everyone is fighting for your attention. Everyone is trying to tell you how you should feel and how you should think. But don't you know that your creator, God, has created you with a purpose and a plan for your life? And when you seek after him, you get to know him. Today's message, I'm going to be talking about someone in the Bible named Asa. The story of King Asa can be found in the book of 2 Chronicles in the 15th chapter. Asa was one of the earliest kings of the land of Judah and Benjamin. Asa was a good king. When a lot of people around them in the nation had turned their backs on God, Asa chose to be loyal to God. When he became king, he went throughout his nation and told them, we are going to follow God. And because he did that, God was faithful to him and God blessed him. One day Asa had a battle with an army from Ethiopia that had one million men. Now Asa had his own army. Asa had actually strengthened his land, but Asa realized that his help come from the Lord. So he asked the Lord, he went to the Lord and the Lord delivered him in that battle. On his way back from the battle though, the Lord had a message for Asa. And today I want to talk about the message that the Lord had for Asa because I believe it's a message for you and me even on today. That message can be found, like I said, in 2 Chronicles, the 15th chapter. Take a look at it with me. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And it reads like this. It says, Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from the battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Wow, isn't that an interesting message from the Lord for Asa? He said, if you will seek the Lord, if you will stay with the Lord, the Lord will stay with you. That's good news today. But what about that other part? What about abandoning the Lord? He said, if you abandon me or turn away from me, then I will turn away from you. What does that mean? Well, let me give you a little hint. God does not change. God does not move. So if any turning away is to be done, it's probably for us. See, in these times right now, it's easy to think that God's way is not the best way. It's easy to think that somebody has got a lot better idea. But God lets Asa know and he lets us know that we need to stay with him and we need to trust his plan. I want to talk to you about how to stay close to God. Are you seeking God? I'm going to tell you how. There are three things you need to know about when it comes to seeking God. Those three things are prayer, scripture, and obedience. Today, our teaching teams come together and they've got some illustrations and they're going to talk to you about those. Then I'll come, come back and talk to you a little bit more about how we can be seekers for God. Have you ever prayed about something and wondered if God heard your prayer? Yes, I have prayed about us going back to school. Let's think about prayer, guys. Here's this glass with water and foam. And think of the water as God. Um, and think of the foam as all of our problems. Like, you've been worried about um, um, if you're going back to, uh, if you're going to school or camp. Think about some of the things that we go through. You guys go through stress at school. You go through peer pressure. You go through bullying. Sometimes we, we think that God isn't hearing our prayers. And this phone represents that barrier. We, we think that sometimes when we pray that God doesn't hear what we're, we're praying about. But actually, he does. Let's look at what the word says. Our reading Hebrews 
chapter 4, 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And I think the key word there, guys, is confidence. So we have to go when we pray and petition um, to God about all these different things that we worry about. We have to be confident. We may not see him working, but he actually is. So our prayers are actually getting through to him. All right, so our seeker found a cookbook. And really, what do you use a cookbook for? Well, I use a cookbook when I want to try something new, a new recipe or even an old recipe. I'll go and I'll look up, say, a, a carrot cake. I'll find a carrot cake, it'll have the instructions, how much I need, all of those different items for me to follow to try and make the perfect carrot cake. Or say I want meatloaf, whatever the case may be but I have a recipe book on how to get there. Now, do I always get it right? Not always, but I still continue to go back to that recipe and perfect it. And I also may make notes of what's going on. So, when we're thinking about our lives, God has given us something similar, his Bible, his word. And when we take his word and we get in his word and we seek instruction, he is then faithful to tell us how to apply it in our lives. So. The scripture that the seeker read was 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and it is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses this to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So we need to get into God's word daily, seeking his face, asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what his word is saying for our situation, be it what are we gonna do after we graduate? How are we gonna now make friends when we're not in school every day? How can we build the relationships that we made while we were in school? How can we be more obedient at home? Whatever the case may be, but God has an answer for us when we seek him in his word. Good morning, Youth Church. Today we'll be talking about obedience. So I'm gonna get my helper to place the egg gently into the glass on the left side. So what you notice here is when um, our glass represents the world and the egg is us as Christians. And what happens is that when we go into the world without obedience to God, um, we tend to sink, fall way down to the bottom. So everything negative that's happening, um, the murders, the, the viruses, the stress, not being able to go to school, not being able to see our friends, it gets us down. And so uh, we want to talk about how as Christians, we can rise up through obedience with God. So I'm going to get my helper to put the second egg into the second glass, and the glass represents the world. So go ahead, helper. And I'm gonna pour a little salt into the water, which is the world, and my helper is gonna stir it. And let's just see what happens when we're obedient to God. You can go ahead and stir. So as you continue to consistently practice daily Bible reading, daily prayer, meditation, serving others, you will rise up in Jesus Christ. Matthew 5 and 13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Man, weren't those some cool lessons? We learned about some things that's important for you to know if you're going to be a seeker after God. Seeking God is about building a relationship. The better and the more comfortable you are with the God who created you, the more confidence you can have when you approach him, when things go uh, happen in your life, okay? See, when they talk about prayer, 
Prayer, just like those little droplets, sometimes we wonder if our prayers really get through to God. But as we continue in prayer, we build that confidence. And even we don't know how God's going to handle it. We know that when he, we take it to him, he's got it and we're good. Likewise, in scripture, just like in that cookbook, and I don't know how many of you have cooked before, but just like in that cookbook, it gives us instructions for life. It can teach us about decisions we have to make. It can teach us about things we need to do. It can teach us how to react to people in certain situations. The Bible gives us that instruction, and that's why it's important for us to follow the Bible. And obedience brings it all together. When we choose to do things God's way, we continue to be uplifted even when things are down. That doesn't mean sometimes we're not confused, maybe sometimes a little sad, but when we just keep choosing to do things God way, just like adding that salt to that glass, we don't know how, we don't know when, but we eventually, we begin to rise. We can stay afloat even when life tries to pull us down. So that obedience is important. When we go back to that story of King Asa, Asa listened to the prophet and he got even more determined about following God. He got more determined about making sure his land kept God first in all that they did. And the Bible says that he had many years of peace. The Bible also teaches us that other people around him from the nation of Israel, they said, wait a minute, this guy Asa's serious. We're going to follow him. They moved to Asa's land because Asa was serious for following God. And boys and girls, young people, we want to be witnesses for God. That's what God has called us to be. And when we follow him, when we stay close to him, when we seek him each and every day, people will know a difference in your life and they will not want to know the God that you serve. You see, when prayer, reading God's word and obedience becomes an active part of our lives, we find ourselves closer and closer to God. And remember that promise that he made to Asa. He said that if you are with me, I am with you. See, the Bible teaches us about a secret place. It's a secret place where we dwell with God. It said that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. That's a big way to say that when you stay close to God, he always got your back. He always got his eye on you and he's always there in your time of need. See, the Bible in Jesus talks about prayer. He says, when you pray, don't worry about what every, everybody else hear and what everybody else think. But you go to your closet, you go to your secret place and the God that hears you in your secret place will reward you openly. He even talked about obedience. He said, when you do your acts of obedience, don't do it just for everybody to see, but you do it in your heart where God knows that you're honoring him as your Lord. He said that God will see you in that secret place and reward you openly. Now, don't get it twisted. The secret place is not about living and hiding because God has created us to be warriors in this world. But the battle we fight is a spiritual battle. So he's preparing us that when we pray to him, when we stay in his word, when we walk in obedience, we become strong warriors for Christ. And he is helping us with our time of need. Remember that you are in the secret place. I don't care whether you're on the streets or where in you're in school, or no matter what's going on in your life, whatever scenario God sends you to, when you're close to him, he will be with you and carry you through. And he is your protection. He is your justice. He is your peace, no matter what's going on in your life. Seek him with all of your heart. I can tell you from my experience, God will never let you down, but you must seek him with all of your heart. He promises you, if you seek him, you will find him. If you seek him with all of your heart. Oh, the worshiper in me wants to be free from the cares of life that seem to weigh me down. Oh, the worshiper in me needs consistency to lift my hands to give you praise when no one
I hope that you learned something today. And most of all, I hope that you've decided to become a seeker for God. The cool thing about being a seeker for God is it's not really like a hunt for clues, but more like a journey. He leads the way. All you have to do is follow. Your journey begins with Jesus. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. It is my prayer today that you will decide to follow Jesus by accepting him as your Lord. He will be with you no matter what you go through in life. If you would like to speak to us about accepting Jesus, you can email us at youthchurch at lbpmbc.net. You can also go to connect on the church app and select I have decided to follow Jesus. You'll be contacted by someone who can talk with you in more detail about your decision. 
Well, it's time for us to go now. Before we do, I want to give a special shout out to the entire youth church ministry. There are many people that do a lot of work for this ministry that you may not see on camera, but we are so thankful for all the efforts into making this happen. I sincerely thank you. And of course, if there's anyone out there who'd like to join us, we welcome you to do so. As we close, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this, another opportunity to fellowship together in youth church. We thank you for all that you are doing and we thank you for the opportunity to be seekers in Christ. Father, we pray for those who've decided to give their life to you, Lord. We pray that you would just continue to be with them and guide them and let them be the truth, find the truth in you. Father, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.